Security Seminar here at Purdue University. Today is my great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Mike uh, Burmester from uh, Florida State University. Uh, and uh, he's going to uh, talk about provable security in mobile ad hoc networks. And I saw some faces in, in the room that I know that uh, they work in the area, so they'll be very interested in the talk. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, uh, Mike was previous with Royal Holloway, uh, London University, uh, got his uh, undergraduate degree from Athens University and the PhD from Rome University. And his main research interests are in key distribution, privacy, anonymity, network security, and watermark. Thank you. Um, so th um, I, um, uh, my name is Mike Bermes, as uh, Christina said, and uh, this, this is joint work with um, uh, Tree Van Lee, who is also at Florida State University. He's a visiting professor there. And what I shall talk about is um, security, security for uh, mobile ad hoc networks. And this, is, um, um, this area has been sort of, um, is a, a lot of research has um, been taking place in it, and it's um, um, some very interesting work has been done, including work in Purdue, uh, on designing uh, efficient and reliable routing algorithms. Uh, the, from the focus has been on efficiency and reliability and not so much security and the this approach makes sense in a new area where um, you um, uh, you you're not quite sure how to get things done it's be best to focus first on working out protocols that are reliable and at the later stage when you when you have something which works uh, then consider the possibility of it working securely and not being abused while it works so uh, in many respects, I, th I think the time has come to look at uh, uh, how these protocols can be secured and in general how um, the, uh, the whole area can be viewed from a security angle. And this is what I'm going to um, talk about. So one of the problems with, with security is that um, you, you, you can have to sort of formalize your model before you can even start talking about security. And the, the model itself is not sufficient. You also have to formalize the model of the adversary. You have to very precisely uh, explain or limit the, the, or describe what the enemy can do, what strategies the enemy can use. Um, and that, that is sometimes referred to as the threat model. Uh, and then you also need another model. You need a model, a security model, with respect to which you will prove your security. What is security? Uh, so I, I actually will need a formal definition for a mobile ad hoc network, a formal definition for the, fro um, the threat model, and a formal definition for my framework, security framework. And then I start asking questions. My first question is, is that, um, uh, is it possible at all within my formalism to, to get security? Because if, that, if I can't, then I've, I've, my, I've put the security to be too tight and then I can't get anything. Uh, and I will consider you considering two uh, uh, ways of achieving my goal. They will be approximations. They will converge towards my, my goal. Uh, and the, the one will be a, a, a reactive approach. Uh, tracing malicious faults, and the other one will be a proactive approach, um, tolerating faults. And I shall say more when I come to that. Uh, my introduction is very brief. Um, the um, uh, uh, the uh, mobile ad hoc networks, there's a lot of work going on, and I could spend a quarter of an hour talking about them. I just will sort of single out some of the uh, basic properties they have. Um, essentially, they um, are a sort of uh, collections of mobile wireless uh, nodes. Uh, they have no infrastructure because the nodes move and they, the range of their broadcast is short. Uh, the links are made and broken in an almost ad hoc way. Usually, the nodes are battery powered, so they have restrained, constrained resources. Um, and. Uh, to achieve, to communicate in such an environment, it is not possible to communicate directly. What you have to do is you have to communicate by relaying packets through other nodes. So you have to find a route, and the packet is relayed from node to node until it reaches its destination. 
And the big problem there is how can you design uh, a routing algorithm which uh, is uh, secure in a malicious environment. And the problem itself is ill-defined. I mean, the question is, what do you mean by secure in the first place? So you have to define a formal framework for security. And the second thing is, what do you mean by malicious adversary? Which means that the, uh, you have to s describe what maliciousness or the, the threat model. So that's what I will start. But I need models. So my first model will be trying to capture the essential characteristics of a mobile ad hoc network. It has been done in many ways. Um, essentially, the first thing is I have to capture the, the, the nodes, the mobile nodes. What are the mobile nodes? And the, the simplest way is to use um, a finite state machine. So each, and a probabilistic one, they're allowed to toss coins. So um, my nodes are sort of Turing machines or whatever it is. This is from an abstraction. Um, I, I need this abstraction because if I want to prove anything, I have to be very specific about what I can achieve and how I achieve it. The next thing is a little more complicated, but this can be done quite simply. What is, how can I describe this um, network which keeps changing in time? Uh, and the simplest way is to use a finite, uh, um, uh, uh, sort of, uh, again, a sort of state machine, but a, a random process, it's sort of a Markov process or whatever it is, and which at each point in time, it specifies um, maybe I can use um, at each point in time, what will be specified is a, a, a graph, which is the network and the state of the system. So I don't know, can I do this? Oh, I can use the mouse. Thank you very much. So the, the a graph G, in general, a graph GT, and the state ST. The state is the, the set of all internal states of the system. Um, so GT will, will be on the vertex at V, and it will have an edge set. And these edge sets keep changing because the links keep changing. And the, the ST is the, the, um, the, sort of, uh, the internal states of, of the um, system. And this is not enough. I have to actually capture the, the particular way these graphs develop uh, and um, the, the way. So I impose certain constraints, which come in three categories. The first is the Markov constraint. The second is a mobility constraint. And the last is the medium constraint. Um, the Markov constraint essentially has to do with memory. So what happens is the, the current state of the system um, uh, given the current state, then the next state is defined independently of all the previous states, earlier states. And the second one has to do with the transitional probabilities, how you go from the current state to the next state, uh, uh, the current state being GT and the next state being GT plus one, or oh, this is the system. Uh, and you, the, these are sort of done in a way which is independent of T, of the time. And then I just define these um, uh, transitional probabilities as being essentially my mobility distribution. So networks, uh, ad hoc networks, are defined by a mobility distribution. Who is part in? The, who takes part in the mobility distribution? Uh, essentially, the nodes and nature. Uh, the mobility distribution may be simulatable. Some of the um, ad hoc networks come fall into this category simulatable ad hoc networks, but most of the more interesting ones are non-simulatable. And the reason is that nature cannot be simulated or the, you cannot simulate the, um, the behavior of the nodes. The nodes may have sort of non-simulatable behavior. If you could simulate, of course, the model would be much easier to deal with. What I'm trying to capture is the, uh, a general setting, a more general setting. And the more general it is, the more 